Hello colleagues, here we are to use some minutes speaking about gamification and serious games. About uh, 10 years ago, no company mentioned video games as nothing more than a waste of time or something to avoid to persecute among their employees. Today, we find that many companies use video games in their work environments or in their relationship with their customers. This is what we will discuss in this chapter. So let's start thinking about what is, what is a game and what is serious. A game is something we play and enjoy, right? So we enjoy playing with Angry Birds or passing a Sunday afternoon playing Monopoly with family. But, but what if I am a physics teacher and I use Angry Birds for my students to research about parabolic thought? measuring screen frame after frame and calculating what the angles would be to kill the pigs. Or what if I am a human resources direct director and use Monopoly or some of the similar games for my employee candidates to evaluate their skills, mental process, or even their lack of ethics. Sometimes then the difference is not so much in the process than the conception. If we use a game for a serious purpose, then it already is a game, but it's seriously used. We should not confuse serious with no funny. The opposite of serious is not fun, it's informal or trivial. Opposite of fun is boring. And as a premise, we should have if we design of your games for a purpose. A serious game should be fun, as well as helpful. Some authors speak of applied games instead of serious games to avoid this confusion. So we are looking in this chapter to video games designed or used for being used to another goal apart from fun. And we know about the potential of games, motivation, learning, training, creativity, and everything in a safe way. Serious games are not new. But term is only for, from 15 years ago. Before that, of course, uh, we did have educational games in a field of activity that has come to be called entertainment. Games applied to learning are as old as human beings. We also ha had simulators. 40 years ago, we were we were were very expensive uh, and they maybe were boring, only oriented to mimetize the real world. Aerospace industry, military, automotive, railway. There has been a fast route from high cost to low cost in this area. At the same time, that technological developments, game simulators has been approaching to industrial ones. More recently, we started to see other games, games used for advertising. As soon as brands started to see that number of users went up, they started to think about their marketing use. In 2000, FIFA Soccer from Electronic Arts started to include real commercial ads into the game. Around 2002, the term serious game began to popularize, including all that concepts and some others. Games used for health, for physical exercising, for art. And as we mentioned before, the only difference should not be the game itself, but the purpose designers have when thinking about players' experience. So one core area of serious games are simulators. We saw games are good for learning and training, so it's not difficult to imagine why simulators has been important as soon computers has been able to model physics processes in real time. Sometimes are very realistic, as in battle of or flight simulation, but there are also good simulators with non-visual realistic processes, like business simulators. One of important aspects of simulators is the way designers are adding, adding uh, game elements to them to motivate more users and to pay attention to aspects difficult to solve in a natural way. For example, if you want a pilot to train avoiding some dangerous points, the real simulator only passes or crashes. It's like a black or white option. But a gamified simulator can give pilot points depending on the distance, speed or time making more interesting and informative the whole process. You know, we Virtual World from this game have project 
You can see some examples of simulators they have been developed in the following, following videos. Another useful application of serious games is of the gaming. Whenever a creative publicist has a tool to carry a content to the target user, there can be a marketing action. And video games are very good to reach the user and to engage him or her. First users or uh, purchases of our gaming were just adding commercial ads to gameplay of existing games, like FIFA Soccer example. But later, they have been found and other different and creative ways of using games as marketing actions. We are going to see some examples. Here we have an example of taking a game genre to develop a game oriented to a commercial brand. This is a screenshot of Mista Fighter. Mista is a new product from Mau, a beer Spanish company, a mixture of beer and lemon. Uh, trying to reach new consumers, Mao commissioned the development of a fight game with specific characters around beer time and they developed uh, also a marketing campaign around with Facebook socialization. You can see a video. Same beer company, very involved in other gaming, also cloned the game. In this case, a specific game very successful in the time, a Palabrados, which is a Spanish word for a kind of uh, word puzzle, and developed a word game, Rimados, for a rhyme puzzle. It's also a good example of video game as a part in bigger commercial campaign. You can see next video people playing the game in bus stops in Madrid. Here you have an example of classic other gaming. The sponsor company of the Spanish National Basketball League, Endesa, used also for a sponsorship of a successful game of basketball shooter, Basket Deuce. In a more complex structure, Big businesses also start to think about games for these marketing actions. In this example, Mars Group, a company with activities in transportation and energy sectors, try to reach to public a different vision of oil market, maybe trying to change public opinion of a not very well seen business in these times of renewable and clean energy, and generate brand image as industrial leader. The game objective uh, focuses on strategies, flooring deposits worldwide, and decision making. This field of gaming is very related with other digital business areas, not only games. We have analyzed one of more innovative Spanish company, companies in these areas, Bichun. They have developed an analytical tool used and licensed for several customers for pin codes management. They use the system for Coca Cola and other clients' pin codes. And we have the oldest kind of serious games, maybe because children can play without social problems. Despite this, the educational world, professors and publishing companies have been very resistant to change. A typical example is the periodical table of elements that, that all of us have had to study. Some years ago, an artist designed a periodic table of Pokemon with some experiments uh, proved to be much better to learn and memorize for kids than the usual table. Game experience enhances learning. As we saw, Games provoke emotions, and emotions make learning better and deeper. Now we know that education is much more than mandatory school years, 
and there are a lot of examples of educational games for all ages. Even platforms as Coursera or Code Academy based on games to motivate learning of more and more subjects. Coming back to serious educational games, we can see for example Dragon Box, one of the most recognized series of games to learn maths. In a movie mission, we pilot a nanobot medicating the body killing cancer cells. This game used the power and appeal of a casual game to help young people with cancer fight their disease. Some studies show patients who play this kind of games uh, respond better to medication, have better life quality and best perspectives after treatment. And here you have a link to one of the most interesting serious games companies, DennisSeriousGames.net. Its web has some examples of these kind of games. Jane McConigal is a very well-known game designer. She is the author of Reality is Broken and various human-enhancing games included in her initiative Games for Change included Super Better in 12, uh, 2012, which has allowed hundreds of thousands of players to face life's real challenges as depression, anxiety or chronic pain. She has some said conferences, maybe most known being this one from 2010. You can see especially the part from minute 12 to 17, or all the video if you, li if you like. A couple of examples of games for change. Narco Guerra 2013 is a risk style strategy game where the player deals with the dangerous conflict of the war on drugs. Narco Guerra looks at the ongoing conflict from the perspective of the Mexican authorities trying to stamp out the drug trade, attempting to retake Mexico's regions from the dark cartels, dealing with corruption within the police. Sidekick Cycle is a bike runner that, apart from gaming itself, gives money to an NGO that sends bicycles to the third, to the third world. Depending on expenses made by players, real bikes are sent to children in poor countries. It can be played in smartphones, iOS, and Android. Let's take gamification. Gamification or ladification is the use of game elements and game design techniques in non-game environments. It's a new and controversial term, but with significant market importance last year. From my point of view, there are many projects where serious games and gamified systems merge. Although a serious game is clearly a game designed as such, and a gamified system is, is an existing system not game, to which game elements are added. To understand this, this is a Farmville screen. Maybe some of you have played Farmville sometime, but imagine you don't. There's no need to know the game. Only seeing this screen, you guess this is a game. And without knowing what's the game about, there are some elements any of us can recognize. Configuration, resources, points, level, name, and so on. Each one of these elements are parts that make up Farmville. They are not the whole experience, but without them, you could not build the game as it is known. We recognize them because most of these elements are common or similar in many games. 
Others, of course, are particular and specific to this one. This screenshot is from Salesforce, a CRM tool very popular these days. This version has added game mechanics to compete against other users and to gamify user experience. You can see some elements responding to common game design patterns. This is one of the fundamentals of gamification systems. We take an existing system, digital or not, and we add game elements and mechanics to add on the system and change in some way the user experience. But of course, elements are only a little part of a game. You have to design them to perform in some way. You have mechanics and dynamics, as we saw in game design chapter. We had batches, but when does the user win a batch? Which one? We had points, but how does the user win or lose points? As in good games, the elements have to be designed in an artistic and creative way to be entertaining. For the player, there must be some goal besides the success in the game. Training, motivation, recognition. User experiences a game, but the reason is out of the game. Real data shows that many companies are incorporating gamification in their processes. There are estimations of over 12, 20 or 30 million, million dollars only in USA. Games are powerful, we know, but gamifying a system with success is not as easy as it looks. It's not just giving some points and badges. Gamification is not valid for every aspect of work or business. Garner has said a lot of you about gamification tendencies last year. One of most known was that 80% of the current gamified apps will fail, especially for poor design. One of these apps only work if it's engaging. That's something we already know from the video game market. A good game design is crucial for success. But taking it to business, we also need to have a good knowledge of business nature and processes and an integration with existing technologies. One of the tools used by, by Gartner for sewing trends is this curve graphic of hype. This represents the maturity, adoption, and social application of a specific technologies. It's a study that we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run and underestimate the effect in the long run. Taking that in, into consideration, the hype cycle provides a graphical and conceptual presentation of the maturity emerging technologies through five phases. The first is, is technology trigger. A potential technology breakthrough that uh, kicks things off, often with no usable products and proven commercial viability. The second is the peak of inflating the expectations. That's when success stories start. Some companies take action, most don't. Then happens third phase, the through of the silencement. Interest goes down and experiments and implementations fails. Investments continue only if the surviving providers improve their products to the satisfaction of early adopters. Fourth is the slope of enlightenment. When more instances of how the technology can benefit the enterprise start to crystallize and become more widely understood. And finally, the plateau of productivity, that's when mainstream adoption starts to take hold. The criteria for viability are clearly defined and broad market applicability and relevance pays off. And in this graphic from 2012, we can see gamification in the second phase. Near other technologies, less uh, big data or 3D printing. What has happened since then is that gamification has advanced to throw off this silencement. As in, and in 2015, Garner took gamification off of hype chart. So gamification is no more for Garner an emerging technology. May move it from a major game changer theme to being a component of another one, digital marketing. Here you can see a conceptual differentiation between serious games 
at gamification, depending on considering the project as a whole or as a part. In practice, there are some examples where clearly gamification, other ones clearly serious games, and many moving on the frontiers. Before the examples, I invite you to use some minutes on this wonderful TED talk from this shell. Gis is the author of The Art of Game Design, a, week, a book we referenced it in Game Design chapter. This video from 2010 had an important viral effect. He catched the gamification concept and visualized next future in a way we can recognize seven years later. The part between minutes 6 and 11 are maybe the most related with this topic, but all the talk is interesting and entertaining. So, besides from the pin codes, the loyalty points, and the employees of the month used by many American companies, let's see a few examples of what is now called gamification. Maybe the first paradigmatic example of a gamified system is PowerSquare, a web to share location with your network of contacts and your points, batches you compare with others, socialize your achievements comment of places in which you have been, receive prices for performing sector activities, and so on. It's a very good use of GPS geolocalization. Nike makes sneakers and wants people to run more. So they design Nike Plus, a software service connected with an electronic accelerometer de device placed on the base of shoes that knows and transmits every step, step given. Around that, Nike Plus pattern application that takes up data and makes the run experience more playful. User can see the longest route, the faster one, you can compare with previous months, set challenges and goals, receive trophies and medals, also start your career in social networks, play the power song to hear the music you like when you, while you run. Nike Plus is maybe one of the most useful and well-designed well gamification services. The action follows being the same, running. But things are added around to improve the experience and make it more motivating, attractive, and challenging. Nike does, does not like the player to, be, to buy something additional. Of our data is more precise with gadgets. From the point of view of mechanizing, this is achievement. The consumer is so interested that he buys something additional to get the added value. For not only being limited to runners, Nike designed Nike Fuel, another gamified service like an evolution of Nike Plus to cover all sports. Another good use of gamification and integration with game experience is Zombies Run. Zombies Run is a mobile app where you play a small town trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. The player acts as a character Runner 5 through a series of missions during which you can run, collect items to help the town survive, and listen to various audio narrations to uncover mysteries. This app adds the gamified experience, a very important game part, and a story. The storyline of the game is based in science fiction authors. As a curiosity, the game was funded by a quick starter campaign which raised it more than five times that was expected. Its immersive storyline makes running more fun and attractive. Salesforce is an actual CRM, one of the most used in the world. It's cloud-based and has managed to develop an own market of plugins and apps, creating an ecosystem around the original CRM application. Nitro is a gamified plugin for Salesforce.
Here you can see a screenshot of Arcade, a proprietary application developed by Bytoon also around CRM jobs. In this case, the dashboard becomes a fish tank where professional activities relate with fish's behavior. As user gets sales, the fish assigned to him grows. The virtual fish evolves along with your goals. The pro professional goal becomes the gamified one. You can look at yourself in the bowl, compare with your team, with some performance indicators and batches. The game is actualized in real time. In a different field of application, here we can see an example of a children food company, Nutriven, which developed a tablet app to use while the child uh, is eating. A story in the app evolves according to how good meals go, according to the parent. One index of gamification importance is seeing big companies of uh, traditional markets going into gamification experiences. Many banks are now trying to use gamified applications with their clients. One of the biggest banks in Spain had a four-year experience with BBA game, a gamified operative for bank accounts that gave points for each operation, mainly to use those points in price draws. This game was closed last year with considerable overall impact in online banking operation. Here at the bottom, we can see a link to a good resource for market gamification examples. There are some real cases from one of the biggest tech companies doing gamified projects, Bunchball. Take some minutes to go over these cases. You can see there as mostly two kinds of gamified projects. One for internal motivation, focus it on company employees, and the other for customer motivation and loyalty. To end this chapter, we think about methodology for gamified design. As with game design, there are no standard ways of defining a gamification project. We do have tools for some of parts needed. Business analysis, user analysis, tech analysis, and design, etc. That there is an attempt of design tool by Sergio Jimenez, one of Spanish more recognized designers in gamification field. It's based on BMC, a mechanics dynamic aesthetics model we saw in game design. Here you can see the aspect. It's a canvas, very similar to business model canvas. Designer can use some days or weeks to dynamize meetings with employees, users, managers, etc to take aspects of the design and take notes of each of them. And that's all folks. I leave you with these possible activities. Thank you for watching. See you around. I wait for you in our Google Plus community.